Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome to this very special Q&A video. Before we begin, I just want to say thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. Thank you for being here. You have created the most wonderful community and now feel like my extended Enchanted family. So with that said, let us begin. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome to this Q&A video. So before we begin, I thought I'd introduce myself again since there are so many of you guys here now. Hello if you are new, my name is Alwyn, I'm 29 years old and I live in the south of England. I love making pagan, witchy, naturey videos. The list is endless. I've got a lot of creativity that I want to share basically. <laughs> grab a cup of tea, grab your favourite drink and I really hope you enjoy. So let's begin at the beginning at a really really important question. Is your real name Alwyn Oak? If you didn't know already, my name actually isn't Alwyn Oak. The reason why I changed it is because as part of my job, I work in a secondary school and I don't want those kids finding me on YouTube. <laughs> no way. <laughs> there is another deeper meaning behind the name. It's a really sweet story. I've always loved the name Alwyn because my grandma used to have a baby sister called Alwyn and unfortunately she didn't live past one. I always wanted to honour the name. When I have a daughter or a son and when I lived with my mum there was an oak tree at the bottom of her garden and actually it was the first thing I've ever named and I named the oak tree Alwyn Oak. What is your star sign? I am an Aquarius. That probably will come as no shock to you as my creativity is through the roof. I have so much creativity and it really is a blessing and a curse. Times. What is your favourite crystal? Well, I have two favourite crystals. One of them is amethyst and the second is hematite. And I love both of these crystals purely because amethyst always really helps me with my creativity and my imagination. But then when I want to come back down to earth, hematite will always ground me and soothe me and I love how it feels and its weight. Do you consider yourself a pagan? Yes, I consider myself a pagan. I think of it as like an umbrella term because I am so interested in every single part and I practice so many different things that I have no idea what to call myself. So I am a pagan and it's as simple as that. Did you always feel drawn to nature? No, I have not always been drawn to nature. I really cut myself off from the world until I was about 23 and that's when I started to notice the seasons and I really wanted to get in the rhythm of the seasons because they inspired me so much. I've always been one of those people that really am drawn to the little things in life. Like anything tiny would just amuse me and I want to spend hours doing it. So when I did fall in love with nature, I really noticed those little things and it helped me to thrive and then see the bigger picture. What is your favourite tree that you connect to the most? My undeniable love will always be with oak trees and yew trees. They are so whimsical and just by looking at them, they tell a story. I love a quirky tree. How do you identify plants and trees? Books and apps. These really, really help me because I didn't know everything. I don't think anybody knows everything. And I'll link these in the description box below. They're really good as you can take them on a walk and make something of a walk by looking up what you're seeing. And it really helps me to get connected and grounded within nature when you know what you're looking at. How do you use crystals? Actually, I am a certified crystal healer. Basically, I spent too much money on a course on the internet and I got a diploma because of it. But I am very happy with it and I perform crystal healing on my friends and my family members and they love it. What is your favourite type of music? I have a deep love for classical music, rock music and orchestral music. I love Howard Shaw and James Horner, of course. I'll actually leave my Spotify in the link below for you guys if you want to check out some of my playlists. What made you want to do music as a career? I just love music and I see it as a form of magic. We listen to music to give us 
a feeling or a certain emotion and it can change our mood instantly. And the science behind why we are feeling this way is so fascinating and I love looking into music therapy. And when I write my music for my videos, when I want a video to be emotional, I will try and make that music emotional. And I want you guys to really enjoy the music and I really love creating an emotion when I write my music. So I hope you enjoy and if you've ever cried, I'm sorry, but I want you to feel <laughs> that way. Are you ever going to upload your music? So I get this question asked a lot and yes, I really, really, really want to upload my music soon. But the thing is, I don't really have the proper recording software or mixing software to put it on and I really want it to be lovely and crisp and beautiful for you guys to hear. So I'm working on it, I promise. What is your Hogwarts house? What's your favourite Disney princess that you can relate to the most? There's a film I've been obsessed with recently and that is Frozen 2. I just really can relate to Elsa and the fact that she didn't really have anybody that she could relate to. And that's me when I was younger because I was just this this little girl who was just wanting to be a bit different and no one really understood me. But that's okay because I've found my enchanted forest now and I've let it go. So it's okay. Oh no, I don't want to put that in there. And last year when I found my enchanted forest, I was really walking into the unknown and I found what I was looking for. What's your favourite tea? I love English breakfast tea. I would drink that all day long. As a really lovely treat, I love a tea called Lady Grey and it's got a really lovely orange tone so I would definitely recommend that one. Things you hope to do when the lockdown is over. So one of the main things I'm looking forward to is practicing this new sense of life I feel like I've created for myself in other places. I'm really looking forward to going to a forest nearby called the New Forest and it's a really famous forest in the south of England and it's so magical as you go and there are horses and pigs and donkeys all roaming around and you really feel like you are walking in another time and also let me know if you've been there because it is a really famous forest. What is your favourite type of magic? I'm obsessed with colour. Certain colours with their frequencies and their correspondences. I think it's a really simple form of magic that we can practice in our everyday. For example, if I wanted to attract passion into my life, I would wear red or maybe I would have a red crystal out. Actually, it's a really good tip if you are a witch in the closet and you don't want anyone to know that you're practicing witchcraft, but you're there wearing green and wanting to grow and wanting to heal. No one needs to know. Do you believe in fairies or nature spirits? Of course. <laughs> of course I believe in nature spirits. I just cannot walk through a wood without thinking that every single piece of living life in that wood has a vibration, has a life that is growing and helping. My favourite book that changed my whole life and made me kind of realise about the magic in the forest was The Hidden Life of Trees. This is a book that, in my opinion, you will never see the forest in the same way ever again once you read this book. It tells you about how trees can help other trees, how a whole forest can work together, that an oak tree can produce a gas to cool an insect to defeat another insect that is destroying the oak's leaves. It is just simply amazing and will really kind of make you not want to tread on those little saplings ever again. You will always be careful where you walk. I also have a really strong belief in spirit guides they're like the fairies of the forest, that's how I see them anyway. When I step into the forest and see the squirrels passing by and the robins and just mosquitoes, things like that, I think of those as spirit guides and when we look them up, I had to grab a book, when we look them up in this spirit animal book, every single animal, even a mosquito, will have a purpose and a meaning it's trying to convey to you. So I think that's really, really interesting actually. What's your favourite Sabbath? I think every Sabbath is amazing when it rolls around, but my favourite is Samhain, but also Ostara is a close second. 
what is your favorite tarot deck? I only have one tarot deck and it is a tarot of pagan cats. My friends asked me if I'm psychic after reading from this deck actually, which is very interesting. <laughs> um, which I, I don't know. But this deck is lovely because it's personalized to me and my love of cats. Do you work with deities? I don't work with them per se, but I do like to pay tribute to them during the Sabbaths and I love to create sculptures and paintings of them with my own interpretation of what I think they would look like. What was your first whoa magic is real moment like? So my first experience was when I taught myself how to read my own aura and there's loads of videos online and I stared at my hand for about half an hour before I saw something. I was just like, this isn't going to work, this isn't going to work, I'm going mad, it's not going to work. And eventually I saw just a very faint kind of like bulge of turquoise appear and then a massive blob of turquoise appeared on my hand and it was just absolutely amazing. When I looked around the room afterwards, I could see these kind of big blobs and it was really bizarre. I don't know if anyone else has had an experience like that, but it was like I was vibrating on a different plane. So I think that was probably the moment that I was like, wow, something is definitely to this. What was your most profound experience in the Enchanted Wood? It was actually when I was filming my Yule video last year, I don't know if you remember, but I was saying thank you to the forest and lots of different parts of the forest. Trust me, it was so powerful. Every time I said thank you, I just burst into tears and I got such a tingly feeling every time and I felt as light as air and I was just running around, jumping, going nuts and all this energy just came from the fact that I was being grateful and thank and it was truly a memorable experience. Do you plan on publishing a book someday? So interestingly enough, I have already written my own book. But the reason why I'm not going to publish it is because it has a terrible grammar inside it. And also I wrote it for my friends and it's got so many inside jokes within it. So I would love to kind of mix it up and take those inside jokes out so you would understand what's going on in it. What does your boyfriend think of crystals and witchcraft? My boyfriend is so supportive. I could not have asked for a better boyfriend on that front. He helps me so much with my videos and he's really open-minded to the stuff that I tell him. I even caught him singing to a flower the other day. <laughs> How do you balance your craft and stress? You know what, my craft is my form of meditation. When I'm having a bad day, I draw a picture or I put on it really lovely music and dance around like a crazy person until my legs are numb and I find that really helps me to release my endorphins by dancing like no one's watching. What is your favourite creation? This is an extremely easy question and it is the map of the Enchanted Wood. I'm so glad this idea came to me and I really don't remember how it came now but every time I'm in the wood it's like it's a movie scene now. It's like everything was put there for a reason. It just comes up in conversation. I say, okay, yeah, I'll meet you down Majestic Way. Or, okay, I'm by the Lonely Oak. It just gives the wood a purpose and it makes life just more exciting, I find. What do you wish to ultimately accomplish? I don't know at all what I want to ultimately accomplish. It changes on a daily basis, but I think that's okay. My plan is to live in the moment as much as possible. I know I want to be a full-time YouTuber, like that is the main goal at the moment. So I'm like trying to manifest that. How can I embrace nature whilst living in a city? So I want to address something with you guys and it's about my enchanted forest. You do not need to have an enchanted forest in your life to be happy. I frolic in these woods, yes, but that's not my everyday. The truth is, I find a lot of myself and my comforts at home. And if you live in a city, there are so many things you can do and benefit from inside your home. For example, bring nature inside, whether it be flowers or a herb garden, pictures of the forest or whatever makes you happy or takes you to that place. You don't need an enchanted forest. You can have mine. I give you and share with you this forest, so I hope you enjoy it. Are you in a coven? 
I'm not in a coven per se, but I am in kind of like a spiritual triangle, I don't know how to call it. Me and two of my best friends write a blog called Spiritry and you'll find us on Instagram. We meet up every Monday online and just kind of talk about our weeks but also talk about like spiritual things and I find it's really nice to have people listen to you and really believe your experiences. It's just nice to have those witchy pagan sisters. But yeah, no, I am not in a coven. I love to practice alone, obviously. I think you probably know though that I'm a complete introvert when I want to be and I love practicing alone. I find from a personal point of view that practicing alone really helps me to understand myself a lot more. I'm spending a lot more time with my own thoughts which helps me to just realize things about myself that I never knew before. Do you believe in ghosts and if you do have you ever seen one? A lot of my friends love ghosts and we love going on ghost hunts together like guided ghost hunts that are set up by different companies and it's one of those things that you go there and loads of crazy things happen and you come back and you think oh my gosh I believe I believe in ghosts and you can't sleep at night because you think the whole world is turned upside down and you understand the truth but then about three days later it kind of goes into the back of your mind and you just kind of like mm, did that really happen was I imagining it things like that but I want to share a story with you guys and it's something that happened last year in December and it really really made me believe. It happened on December the 17th and it's when me, my mum and my sister went to a graveyard because it's the anniversary of my granddad's death and it was a really lovely time going to the graveyard and seeing his grave and paying tribute to him. So later on in the day I decided I wanted to paint a picture so I put some lovely spiritual relaxing music on and I was painting a picture. In the corner of my eye I saw like something black flash and it went behind the coat stand and on that coat stand was my vintage coat that I was wearing that same day to the graveyard and I feel like it's a haunted coat now by the way. So I looked over there I was like that's really weird but then in my mind's eye I got this this image that it was my granddad and it I just talked, I talked to the spirit and I said, Grandad, I hope you're okay, it was lovely to visit you today, things like that and like, we're looking after grandma and then I said one more thing, I said, if only I knew it was you, bam, all the lights went off in the house, the whole electric box just went and I was absolutely petrified literally I was alone in the house too so it was pitch black literally jumped up I put my torch on my phone and I went around the house saying thank you goodbye thank you goodbye thank you goodbye and I was just so terrified it was like I was in a horror film I called my mum my mum's not one to kind of believe in ghosts but I called her and I was just telling her everything that happened and the fact that I said you know if only I knew it was you and the lights went off and she said, oh my goodness, that's such a coincidence that the lights went off. And I said, well, why? And she said, because your granddad did this for a living. He was an electrical engineer. Bam. All the lights came on again. I am not exaggerating any part of this story. And afterwards, I cried and cried my eyes out because it was so emotional and very, very overwhelming. So yes. To answer your question in a really, really long, crazy way, I do believe in ghosts. And also I do believe a tree visited me once, but that is for another story. <laughs> what is the process you go through for making a video? The process of a video can take up to two months to a week to make. Sometimes my ideas come in waves and I'm so full of crazy inspiration, but sometimes they can be a little slower than that and I get bits and pieces kind of all presented to me. I have visions of what my videos will look like and sometimes that's a really good thing, sometimes it's not a very good thing when you're trying to sleep. <laughs> all you can think about is these visions that come to you, which I think is a fantastic thing because it works for me though. Obviously, 
my videos are like little fairy stories and I love that so much. I love to embrace my inner child because it just makes me so happy knowing you're going back to a place of comfort and the fact that you can follow along and see someone's thought process. It just really does well for me and I'm really glad that you guys like the idea too. One book that's really really inspired me to create videos like this is Woodland Folk Tales. I love the idea that it takes something real that happened in nature but it makes a really amazing folk tale out of it. When I'm going into the woods I will kind of take inspiration and do it like that. So for example when I was making my book of shadows I was obsessed with ivy that week, so obsessed because I found that place, the fairy place, um, and it had ivy everywhere and honestly my mind just sees a tiny little fairy just going around and blessing that place. I don't know if I've answered the question yet. Have I answered the question? I don't think so. When I actually record, I do reenactments of what actually happened. I do the music, editing, filming, and I thrive upon doing this. So it's something that I obviously want to do for a long time. How can I bring more creativity into my craft? So I can only speak from my own personal experience, but my creativity opens up in a lot of different ways. Sometimes I'm a very visual, creative person, so I could do a meditation and of course use crystals like amethyst to help my imagination or I literally just go out and experience something new. So when I go to the woods of course I'm exploring new places and they're making me feel something and I'm getting inspiration for them. But you don't just have to go outside for a walk, you could open yourself up to something new. For example a new film, a new documentary, something you know that's going to inspire you, a YouTuber, something. Something that you know you will love or not love that could give you inspiration too perhaps. Going on Pinterest and making a board or literally creating your own mood board if there's like bits of fabric around the house or like little bits you want to put together on your own mood board and literally just seeing it visually in front of you sometimes really really helps too. So there's something else I want to say about creativity. There's something that I struggled with for a long time and that is people that put you down and tell you you can't do things. Let me tell you something, you can do absolutely anything you put your mind to. I think a lot of people just, just doubt us and that's okay because whatever but it doesn't mean that we need to change the way that we feel about stuff. When I was doing art, I was always made to seem that I had to do something really realistic and it had to be really beautiful. But no, it doesn't need to be like that at all. That's why I opened myself up to do a lot of different crafts and experiment with a lot of new things because, I don't know, it might not work out, but at least I gave it a go. And I think that is the mindset that I have that really, really helps me to do all my DIYs. So you can do anything you put your mind to and you manifest that you can do it. That is my tip of the day. So there is one more thing that I want to share with you guys today and I want you to use your creativity and inspirations and things like that to help me. So a couple of weeks ago, I was visiting some old friends called the wise ones in the woods and you might remember them from my birthday vlog. I just wanted to explore a little more so I went further up the path that was outlined by fir trees and I came across this really interesting place. Now I'm not going to tell you what this place reminds me of because I want you to decide for yourself what it reminds you of. It could be a story, a DIY project, a project to make over your entire house, a piece of music, I don't know. The idea will be you will tell me how you see this place and I want to recreate one of them in one of my videos. But I just wanted to thank you guys so much for making your way to the end of this video and thank you so much for watching it. I just can't believe people watch my videos so I'm really really grateful for you guys. Your words are truly amazing and it makes me emotional. I will leave you with the clip of my find and I hope you enjoy.